Hello my friends, Takuya here, and oh my god, do I have a treat for you all here today. So Paradox reached out to me to sponsor me because they wanted me to go and look at one of their new games. Which, as you can see from the screen here, is not a World War II simulator or anything like that. No, we are going all the way back into Mesoamerica. We are going all the way back to the Aztecs. This, my friends, is Tatuani. Which, I know from the very get-go here, I'm going to be butchering the pronunciation of just about everything. But, yes, this is, this is fascinating to me. The game that we're talking about here is a city builder. Something that if you've ever played, like, Children of the Nile or anything along those lines, Civ City Rome, this is essentially an Aztec. Aztec variation of that. There's a multitude of different scenarios that you can play from the very beginning, which have all these varying names that I have difficulty pronouncing in the first place that are set scenarios where you have to accomplish certain things. Or if you just want to build a city and potentially fight people that could be coming to try and attack you, you could do that by playing a random map. But my friends, one of the key reasons why I love this game so much, why I think it's such a cool concept, is because there is perhaps nothing that fits a city builder quite like the Aztecs, especially when talking about things from a military perspective. Yeah, you could do things like Civ City Rome and other things like that where you control a Roman city, but the Aztec cities were city-states. You had an Aztec empire, but just as Rome started as an original city-state before growing into an empire, that pretty much happened along the same lines with the Aztecs, except Tenochtitlan and a few other locations were directly controlled by them, and the rest of the empire was composed of actually vassal states. So the idea of going in here and building an extremely powerful city, which if I just go and begin this advanced scenario, look at this. Look at all this. This is the tutorial that focuses on teaching military basics. Look how incredibly stylized everything is. The way that all of this works, right, is that it utilizes 2D but simultaneously 3D art. So everything is shaped a set way. I can go and change the camera perspective if I want to, but besides that, it, it's a very stylized, very simple game. To the point that the actual download on this is only like like half a gigabyte. That's it. It is not demanding for like any system whatsoever and yet is still so stylized and pretty. And I'm not just saying that because it's a sponsored video. Like I genuinely do love this kind of art and not nearly as many things do this. So like from the third scenario of the tutorial, this here is our city, Tenochtitlan. If I go over here to view the world map of the empire, you can actually see Oh, wait, I just click around here and it actually shows me the territory and other things that are around here with grassland, with jungle, with anything else, how there's not a populated region. We have Tlacopan, who is an allied city with a set population that we can, you know, go and interact with and do things with to trade with them. You have Tlatelolco, who is a enemy state that we could move on to conquer, to capture, or to punish them. And then you have neutral entities, which are not actually hostile to you, but theoretically you could just go ahead and attack because after all, we are the Aztecs. It's just, but this whole thing is absolutely fascinating because it's spread here across the 2D map and yet it's just, it's, it's cool. All right. It's cool. I, I really like how stylized it is. Beyond the actual cityscape itself, there are several things that you have to manage. You have to manage your population, which requires food. You have common workers along with common workers. You have elite workers who go and do, you know, more intelligent, like higher education jobs within society. And of course you have a unit of money, Axe monies, which is your currency, the thing that you would tax and specifically use in order to be able to buy set goods in order to be able to do things. These three are basic things that you would see in just about any other city builder, but what I particularly love about this game is that it includes another dynamic. Symmetry. There is some structure to the layout of your city around your temples, shrines, and plazas, but your urban planning could be improved. Click here to visit your religion advisor. The thing that is fascinating about this, right, is that the Aztecs, the Mesoamerican people, were very key on symmetry. They liked where, if you go and look at depictions of the ancient cities, where things are laid out in grids, they have set temples, shrines, and things that are constructed in set ways, and they liked things to be even, that this was something that was a sacred aspect for them. And so if you go and build a city that is maximally optimized or anything, like you think, okay, I'm going to build this in a set way where my farmland is only going to be here, this is the industrial district, this is this district, and it's going to kind of sprawl out and spread from there, and I'm just going to build whatever I need in one spot whenever I want to. You can do this, but it hurts your symmetry. And so if you don't maintain this, the gods will actually get quite angry with you. It is absolutely fascinating, but today we're not going to be diving into military matters here. No, we want to go ahead and build ourselves a city. We want to have some fun so I can demonstrate some of this from the beginning for how all this works, starting from the basics and working our way up to actually create a nice, balanced city that perhaps in the future, if you all like this episode and you want to see more happen, then we can go and fight things.
So to that end, let's go ahead and just launch a random map and see what it is that we get. I love how you can change all these varying different aspects on here for map options and then hit generate and it will actually just randomly generate a new map that if you don't like how it kind of looks from the get go, you don't have to go into it. That is a fascinating thing that I wish that in the case of civilization or something that that would be more of an option. Because check it out. If I go over here, river, I can change this to oasis, hit generate. Oh, lo and behold, look, that changed how this is set up here. Do I not like that particular kind of map? Well, same settings, hit generate. Oh, we got a new one. Basin, change that over here. Now I'll keep it on basin. We'll change that to a river and water abundant. It's a big ass river. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I, I I didn't mean to make that that big. Normal. Generate. Yep. Let's just go ahead and dive into this now, shall we? So from the very beginning of the game, you can see right here, these are objectives that we have to meet over on the side. We start the game with two set buildings. We have our fortress, which is our base thing here for defense. And then on top of that, we have our trading post, which from this trading post, this is where we can then trade a variety of different goods. It is staffed by the population of our city center. And then on top of that, we can then sell or buy goods as needed to get our income or sell our income, not sell our income, use our income to buy things. What am I talking about? Which on that note, you can see here, there are quite a number of goods that we we can actually utilize. Now, from the very beginning, in order to be able to do anything, you really want to plan out where it is that you are doing stuff because symmetry, again, is quite important to a settlement. So in this case, we can say, okay, well, our river is over here. We're probably going to put our farmland over on this side or at least a lot of it, which we can then build irrigation canals, which will be able to help develop that prosperity even further. There's quite a bit of forest that is here around us, which means that we are going to be good on the industry side of things. And so let's go ahead and see what we can build. First off, housing. From the very get-go, we're going to go ahead and establish some housing here. Lovely stuff. Make sure that we get a road surrounding that and go ahead and get some farmer's huts laid down. The thing about this game is that in order to be able to do anything for farming, you actually need farmer's huts because the farmer's huts are specifically what actually manage the fields. If you don't have that, you physically cannot do anything. The primary food source that feeds our population are maize fields. These are the things that we are going to use in order to be able to sustain. And you can see it's like 0.2 maize per year, which helps with 10 population. That means we're gonna need at least 24 different squares of this in order to be able to feed what we currently have. And we're going to need a lot more of that in order to be able to grow and develop. The thing about this is you can see how it's highlighted green on here for a specific farmer. Each farmer can only handle about 32 plots. And even then they can only handle 32 plots that are actually close by them. So you can't build it too far away and expect the farmer to be able to operate that. It's a fascinating system. Along with the maze, the other crucial beginning thing that you're going to need are fruit trees, which let's see, wait, where are the, where are the, where are those? That's cacao trees. Well, shoot, I don't actually have fruit trees as an option here. I guess maybe because of the environment that I'm on. I'm still learning aspects of this game, as you can probably see. Well, we'll get some chili then. Chili spice adds variety to the diet and helps preserve food. That seems like a decent thing to just have from the get-go. Well, in order to do anything with said food, we are going to need a granary, and we are going to need a market in order to actually be able to buy anything. Which actually, small market, what a large market. How big is that? That's decently sized. I think I prefer the large market from the get-go just to be able to do this. Which on the note for timber, I'm going to need a source of that here. So let's go ahead and get two of these buildings. Built up some sawyers to cut that and a masonry yard in order to be able to repair and fix anything. Oh God, the city is growing very rapidly. I did not anticipate that we were going to grow that quickly when I'm just trying to get things constructed. But hey, even though we're fast forward, you can see this. Look at the 2D art on this. Like it goes and shows the little guys going up and chopping down trees in order to try and get wood out of them here. It's just, it's such a cute little aesthetic here. Poor nutrition is becoming a problem. Look, guys, guys. I am trying here? You all are not helpful for this either, okay? Poor new tree. I, I hear you, okay? I am trying. I just need people to farm and actually do things. Look at you. Look at this old guy. Look at this, uh, Axel I, 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 Axel Spiky dude, loving your work within the fortress. I, I, I love how they've had these varying different feelings about things. It shows their health, it shows their attitude, how good their attack is, their defense is, everything. I, I, the aesthetic of this game and the detail that goes into it is fantastic. Now, in order to maintain anything for our buildings, there are a series of things that we're going to need. Let's see, from the get-go, we're going to need a source of water so that people don't just die. Which means from the very get-go, we need a well dipper, which provides basic water supply and fire protection, but groundwater tends to be brackish and unhygienic. You don't say. Hmm. I wonder why. Well, either way, we're going to build you here for this time so that at least you can actually provide some support to our people. And then on top of Will Dipper, we're going to need to finally get our first shrine, which notice when 
I put this out here. There is average symmetry, there is weak symmetry, and then there's strong symmetry, which provides better bonuses to the population. We are going to go ahead and build ourselves a little shrine right here amongst our farms because we want that to be able to support the population. Now that we have the basics of the city kind of out of the way, there's a series of things that we're going to need to manage. We're starting to develop some culture among other things, but people still don't have protection, they don't have diversion, they don't have anything. If you go here to the common home where it shows, oh, well, they, they need access to a sweeper, which we're going to need that for hygiene. Along with that, we are going to need to make sure that we give them some source of fun. We are building religion right now and also a civic education. So that means sweeper is going to be necessary. So let's go ahead and build that. And simultaneously, we are going to need a, let's see, something for the population here. We need education. Temple Charlie provides a civic education and martial training to young boys. Perfect. Our expenses have outstripped our income this year. You don't say. All right, along with this, we will now begin construction of our first canal. Canals are amazing because what it is that they do is they boost up production here for farming, something that we are crucially going to need as time goes on. Well, now that all basic things for services are out of the way, the big thing that we have to get at this point is pottery. We need an actual industry because I am steadily losing basically all my money, which is a bit of a problem. We have to have some kind of industry in order to be able to sell goods from these goods. Hopefully, we can generate enough revenue in order to be able to do anything for that matter. Huh. Even though I can get a kiln, I apparently on this map don't have an actual source of clay, so I can't, I can't do that. Thanks. Thanks, game. Well, that's not good. Not good at all. That means I'm actually gonna have to go over here and I'm going to have to, what, import more clay? No, is it not? Oh God, I can't do everything. All right, we're not gonna import any more maize. I should be able to actually grow this stuff just fine. Timber, I also do not need to import it. I have enough timber, that's perfectly fine. Clay and stone though, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna need a lot of that. The big thing though is I will need a good to actually sell in order to make anything, which means what? Cotton, uh, clothing, armor, yeah, maybe that? Yeah, cloth, okay, okay. We're gonna become farmers. Let's grow an entire field of cotton so that from that here, maybe we can actually get some industry underway. Oh dear God, I am terrible at managing this. I'm still losing money. Our expenses, Vestro, oh my God, I'm still losing money. How? I have so many cotton built in order to be able to sell. I have to buy so many stuff. My citizens are pained by all manner of ailments and afflictions. You should provide herbalist. <laughs> no, I am failing. I'm making a great city and I am still failing so hard. All right, are we stabilizing? Well, hey, 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 we're, we're doing decent. I think, I think unless I suddenly lose a whole bunch of money from imports or something here, I think that I'm okay. Yes, yes, we went positive. This is like the first gain that we've actually had the entire time here. Oh, oh, thank God. Okay. This game is actually kind of hard to balance. Like, that's the thing. It's a fun challenge because there's so many things that you have to balance, but simultaneously, it, it is hard. It actually is hard. Oh, God, I just lost a bunch of money, I'm sure, in imports again. All right, since we're going to be an agricultural basin then, the thing that I really need to do then, I guess, is go ahead and just build just, like, a ton of things here for cotton, and we're pretty much going to become like the South. Yeah, we're, we're, we're going to become a, a, a Mexican cotton exporter. Oh, but I'm finally, I'm finally turning a profit. Oh, thank God. See, now that's what I want to see. We are steadily climbing. It has actually been a couple of years since we started. You're, we, we've done this for seven years now in the game. We managed to reach a thousand people in terms of population. This is quite solid overall, actually. Oh, I love this. I'm just not realizing going into this. I can set up different kind of uh, festivals and things that will boost things for the year. Oh, that's lovely. So if I have extra stocks of things like the eating of maize and beans, you can actually hold a small festival and dedicate it to a god. That is lovely. There are so many intricacies to this game that you just don't really see in a lot of city builders, and I love that. Oh, that's it. Unemployment is becoming a problem. Okay, now, now it's time to start building up some things again here. Wait, what happened to all my cash? Imports. Oh, no. Because of the salt and everything, isn't it? Yeah, we're going to stop doing that. And the pulque. I, I'm guessing the, the luxury manufactured goods are very expensive, so we're, we're going we're gonna to stop that. We need to focus on exporting our cotton as much as possible, or else I can't afford to get anything. All right, let's construct some furniture manufacturers. If we can get all this here done, then this means that we should be able to get more industry underway. The more that I can export, the better it's going to be. This is going to be a grand economic simulator here. Uses obsid- timber. What do you mean obsidian? Yeah, I don't have any obsidian in order to be able to do anything, so that's not going to work. It's Screw it. Make a brewery. In fact, this could become a great source of income right here. Oh, the brewery is what makes the pulque. Okay, so that's what it is. Yeah, I no longer need to buy it. That actually is super easy to go and create. And from just the sheer amount that I will have in these circumstances, it means that I will be able to actually get quite a bit out. And here now we can finally start upgrading everything to stone roads, or at least not everything, but around our residential areas to get all this going. <clears throat> oh my god, I am about out of money. Okay. All right. We need to, we need to chill 
for a while. All right, we just need to chill. You're short of elite workers. Nah, I don't need this right now. I am trying, okay? But when you have no money, you can't really do anything. All right, screw it. We are building another trading post and we are going to use this to try and sell as many goods as possible because with the amount of things that I have, I should actually be able to sell a lot more that I simply don't. And I need to sell as many goods as I can because I think that that's where my, I think I'm bottlenecked. I think that's the issue is that I'm actually being bottlenecked. I also did not even check to see where anything is being imported to or or how or why like who is buying what so okay then i guess that is the very interesting detail that i really should have realized from the beginning because this is an actual accurate simulation of what ended up happening with markets because if you go and try and produce a whole bunch of goods and then try to sell them but there is no one who wants to buy said goods you will not make any money off of those goods so I have to spend money to open trade with the city that will actually buy said goods and then from there actually sell it to them. So like I can sell my cotton to Chololon, but they only want 16. They don't actually want all that much. <laughs> Oh dear god. The only reason I was able to sell any of it was because Tenochtitlan actually does want some pulque and cotton, but they didn't want anything else that I'd be producing, and they only want a limited amount. Ooh, wow, that, yeah, that's a big jump in money here. I finally figured out the trading system. Lo and behold, hours into this game, I finally figured out the trading system. So now I guess all these different houses need access to more religion and more things in order to be able to grow, and I do want to provide that for them. And my symmetry is amazing right now, and I'm about to spoil all of that through, well, certain actions. So after waiting for a bit to let our funds rapidly boost, now it's time to spend all that money and actually create a nobility district. It only has taken us 14 years. People wish to come to the city, we have no more housing for elites and crowding in homes. Oh, that that's fun. Awesome. Thanks. Well, I suppose that at this point, I probably have enough cash in order to be able to do things, and I'm going to need nobles, which means I'm going to need to... We're going to have to start a building spree now, aren't we? Let's just go ahead and get two here from the very get-go. I know I'm going to spend so much right now on stone, among other things, but I, I have to in order to get the, the nobles taken care of. I'm also realizing now I didn't plan for basically anything when it came to my sister and her freshwater access. Mm. Some of my pending structures are impossible. To what do you mean they're impossible to reach? What did I do... Oh, okay. I may have built the common level too much, too fast. This is, oh God. <laughs> uh, this is a bit of a problem for me. Goods have been stolen from a large, so everyone's stealing everything then. All right, I got my causeway. Does this, funds are being stolen. Oh dear God, everyone, I, I, built, I built a crime city and my economy is crashing. What did I do? Fire the <laughs> What did I do? Oh, this is how it ends. Not with a bang, but with a whole lot of fire. My friends, I think that I am going to end things here today. This has actually been a fascinating game. I, I do genuinely enjoy it, but holy crap, is this thing hard to balance? It, it's real though. It's real though. This is actually one of the best simulations I think I've ever seen of a city. Things can't be too far away from other things. Otherwise, they won't be able to reach. You have to have porter systems. Aesthetic is part of it because people don't want to live in like a dirty part of the city. You have to make it actually look nice. And I, I grew up up playing city builders so in my mind everything needs to be perfectly optimized which is why i built everything in a way that all the farming was set and done over here but in doing so i made my city horribly off balance which in turn meant that i had no space to be able to expand or do anything i'm gonna need to play test around with this i'm going to need to figure out many different ways that we can actually try to balance different things but considering just how light of a game this is on the system it's just it's so easy and fun to just sit down and be able to play for a while to just mess around with something and enjoy yourself. I mean, hell, someone with a laptop from 2001 could probably load this up and play it just fine. Anyway, my friends, I think I'm going to end things here today. This has been fun. If you would like to see more of the game, it is getting ready to release here. In fact, at the time that I'm even making this and getting ready to put this out, I am beyond the point that the embargo ended for this game because I had to do this pretty much at the last minute. So thank you to Paradox for sponsoring this video. This is uh, Tlotan. Again, I'm probably butchering the pronunciation of literally any of it. It is an Aztec-based city builder that I think is personally just rather enjoyable in an extremely challenging way. My friends, thank you all for watching. I will see you all here next time. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and goodbye, my friends. I need to get better at this damn game.